Look, if there's only one story you should stop and watch with your full attention this morning, this has to be it. Prepare yourself. What you're about to see could make you could make you rethink everything. Yeah, I have just returned from a, a life-changing visit to Kenya's refugee camp. It's a place that's made international news as drought and famine affect millions in East Africa. But I think until you go there and you actually see it with your own eyes, it's difficult to comprehend just how, how desperate the situation really is. It's dry, it's dusty, and there's nothing for miles. This lunar landscape, to many, would be hell on earth. To these people, it's their only hope. Somalia is 85 kilometres away across the border, and it's been in drought for three years. So people are heading here to Kenya, to the Dadaab refugee camp. They walk for up to four weeks, and many simply don't make it. But those that do arrive are hungry, and they're tired, and they're exhausted and 50% of the children are acutely malnourished. This tent city in the middle of the desert is playing home to a population the size of Canberra. Initially built to hold just 90,000, the camp is now sheltering more than four times that number, making conditions for both residents and aid workers trying. This is the pre-registration area, basically the first port of call for everybody who has made it here as far as the Dadaab refugee camp. They could be in this holding area anywhere from between three and six weeks. They're given essential supplies. They're taken through to the next process. They're basically registered here before they're moved into the refugee camp where 400,000 people are trying to make it their home. Having not eaten a proper meal in weeks, the residents are in desperate need of food, water and medicine. For people who are literally starving, they appear orderly and patient, resigned to wait because they have no other choice. Now the next step in the line is for families to receive their food packs. They're given maize, there's flour, cooking oil, su uh, sugar, salt, some of the essential items. Now these food packs will last for three weeks. In it is also what they call a BP5, which is a high energy, nutritionally balanced biscuit, just to give people that extra little bit of um, nutritional assistance that they need after the long walk that it's taken to get here. World Vision Australia CEO Tim Costello is on the ground with me to witness the aid response to the crisis. It's overwhelming and you feel paralysed, but I always say because I can't help everybody, it's not going to stop me helping someone. With over 1,000 new arrivals each day, prioritising where to spend the money is becoming more of a challenge. When you're dealing with malnutrition, uh, it's also health care uh, and sanitation. So if, if, if you've got a virus, you actually can't absorb the nutrition from food. So just trucking the food in is just the beginning. Um, you get sick if you don't wash your hands, if you don't have clean water. So it's that bit as well as feeding. So you've got to put it all together to actually have a lasting impact. Families have endured unbelievable heartache, children dying on the long, gruelling walk to Dadaab. We heard of one mother who had ten children and now has only six. Can you imagine packing up your family and walking away from everything that you have? Walking for weeks in search of food and water, all in the hope of simply surviving. This family came from Somalia with their four children. But like so many families here, the alternative was worse. They have sold their farms and what they got is what they used to, to travel all the way from Somalia to Dagahan. So they have nothing left at home. They said nothing, nothing left at home in Somalia. How are you? <laughs> Remarkably, for people who have nothing, you would never know, judging by the mood of the children. What's your name? <laughs> Melissa. The future for kids is uh, really a, a striking challenge for all of us because huge families, um, often the men have numbers of wives and uh, 12 plus kids is not unusual. So uh, those kids getting a chance of education, seeing they have skills, they can do something different to what was their parents' lifestyle, just being pastoralists is, is really the hope for the future. Gurma Begashore is the National Director of World Vision in Kenya. 
He says with 4.4 million people at risk of famine, the aid need is huge. It's been uh, so crazy, so stressful. Um, you see those uh, visits, uh, screening sites, especially the, the young children, their mothers, they are trying to breastfeed, but there is no milk in the breast. And uh, that's, uh, that's very terrible. But the aid response isn't just limited to handing out food and water. 5,000 of these kits will be distributed today. They're non-food item kits. Now, basically, they're catering for a family of five. So if you have a look here, we've got three blankets. There's a tarpaulin, there's a mozzie net, which is really important to keep mosquitoes away. Of course, they carry malaria. We've got cooking pots, kind of essentials that a, a family of five need. There's soap, given people have been walking for miles and miles. There's a few basic hygiene items. There's underwear, there's combs, there's razors for the men, there's fresh undergarments and sanitary items for the women. You can see here just some basic cooking items, spoons and cups and plates and pots and a couple of things that a family that's basically left their home with absolutely nothing will need to start again. But for most of the refugees here, this chance of surviving, this new life they've had to create, in their eyes, is only temporary. You've got nearly half a million Somalis here in a population of 3.2 million. They know they have to make their country work and go back, and they're, they're committed to doing that. But before they can return home, these people and the 50 aid groups from across the globe here at Dadaab need our help. And donating money is the most practical way. How is it spent? What sort of amounts are we talking about that can make a difference? So as little as $25 is for supplemental nutrition, just to save lives with children. $40 is for an emergency kit so that they have all of the things they need in terms of crockery and plates. $75 is actually to truck water in and uh, that, ho that helps something like 100 people. Just that amount of money. With this being the fifth drought in seven years, it will take more than money to fix the problem. The rains aren't due now until November. If they don't come, the world could have one of the worst natural disasters on its hands. However, there is hope. We have the capacity, we have the experience. We can move very fast and uh, things are changing. Yeah, look, there is just so much ahead of them. While I was actually there on Friday in Dadaab, the Kenyan government approved an extension to the facilities because they have to keep making more space. So they're going to open another section of the camp to house an extra 40,000 refugees. So they're trying to bring as many tents in as they possibly can. But you know what, there's so many people out there, as you've just seen, that need our help. So if you want more information or maybe you can donate to the Emergency Relief Fund, um, World Vision, all the details are on our Sunrise website. You can find it there. But um, like I said, there's just so much need, so many different things, more than even just sort of food yeah. and water. And, and look, um, if your kids, particularly your teenage kids, young high school kids have already gone to school, yeah. we're going to put this up on our website. It's worth showing them, I think, mm. when they get home from school. You know, open their eyes to how lucky we are here and how desperate so many people are around the world that need our help. And how much we have. And can yep. I just do a quick um, pay credit to Lee Hubner, who, who both was our cameraman and then edited that story, did a remarkable job, worked really hard, and Tim Davies, the producer, came with us as well. That's so fantastic. guys did a really good job. Um, and another update on Monday, isn't it? We meet your sponsor child. Elias. So I went to great. Ethiopia and that was a truly emotional experience and there's a lot of people probably watching this morning like me that have got the little photo on the fridge yep. if you like you know them well I met him so that's on Monday we got our by sheer coincidence got our latest one update um, yesterday yep and so the difference you know you watch yeah. your kid grow on the fridge it's fantastic all right can't wait for that on Monday